last lecture, we discussed the definition of inductors and capacitors, as well as the voltage, current, and power and energy relationships for inductors. Today's lecture, we will discuss combining inductors and capacitors in series and parallel. First, let's discuss inductors. In order to combine inductors in series, it is very similar to how we combine resistors in series. Inductors in series add, and inductors in parallel combine like resistors in parallel, where the equivalent inductance is equal to one over the sum of the reciprocal of the individual inductances. This figure here shows an example of that, where the voltages across the inductors combine based upon KVL. And the initial current through each inductor would have to be the same because they're in series. Note that for inductors in parallel, if you combine them, the equivalent inductance has an initial current equal to the sum of the individual initial currents for each of the inductors. Let's look at a basic example of finding the equivalent inductance. Here we're going to have a 2 millihenry inductor in series with an 18 millihenry inductor in parallel with a 9 millihenry inductor. And what we want to find is the equivalent inductance. So LAB would be equal to 2 plus 18 in parallel with 9, which is 2 plus 6. Notice that the special case for two parallel inductors is the same as for the special case for two parallel resistors, which is the product over the sum. So the quick way to find 18 parallel with 9 is 18 times 9 over 8 plus 9. So LAB would be equal to 8 millihenry. Let's assume that we had initial current for each of these inductors. If the initial current through the two millihenry were 6 amps, then we would have to have the initial current through the 18 millihenry and the 9 millihenry be some ratio of that. So for example, 2 amps for the 9 millihenry and 4 amps for the 18 millihenry to make sure that this still obeyed KCL. Note that if I do the circuit diagram for that resultant inductor when I combine them together, which would have A and B and 8 millihenry, then the current through that resultant inductance would have to be 6 amps as well. And that's the initial current. Notice these are not DC currents like we discussed before, but the initial current. So now let's discuss capacitors. Capacitors in series combine like resistors in parallel. So what that means that if you have two capacitors in series, you can actually use the product over the sum to find the equivalent capacitance. If you have any more than two capacitors, then it's one over the sum of the reciprocal of the capacitances. To find the initial voltage for initial conditions for a capacitor, you use KVL, where the sum of the voltages around the loop must sum to zero. So you take the sum of each of the individual initial voltages and sum them together. Capacitors in parallel combine like resistors in series. So when you have capacitors in parallel, you simply add them together. Let's do an example. At terminals A and B, we have a 20 microfarad capacitor in series with a 3 microfarad capacitor in parallel with a 2 microfarad capacitor. So we want to find the equivalent capacitance between terminals A and B. What we would have is 20 in parallel with 3 plus 2. Notice here that I'm using the notation for parallel and series, although we have series and parallel combination because capacitors combine opposite of resistors. So this becomes 20 in parallel with 5, or 4 microfarads. So now let's talk about the initial conditions for the capacitors. We will assume that the initial voltage across the 20 microfarad capacitor is 2 volts, and the initial voltage across the 3 microfarad and the 2 microfarad capacitors is 3 volts. Notice they're in parallel, so they must have the same voltage. Now, let's draw the equivalent circuit for terminals A and B. And we're going to have a 4 
microfarad capacitor. What do you think the voltage across that four microfarad capacitor should be? Well, using KVL, it would be two volts plus three volts. So the initial voltage across that capacitor would be five volts. Okay, let's try another capacitance example. Here we have a network combination of capacitors and we wanna find the equivalent capacitance between terminals A and B. This is a little bit more complicated than the examples we just did. So we'll do this one in stages. And we will essentially work from right to left, but we'll also do a little bit of combining at the top. The first thing you'll notice is that 12 is in parallel with 20. So at terminal A for the 12 in parallel with 20, I can write that as 32 microfarads. Then we're gonna copy down the 14 microfarads, the 36 microfarads, and the 24 microfarads. The next thing you should see here is that 21 is in series with 28. 21 in series with 28 would be the product over the sum. So that becomes 12 microfarads. And now working from right to left, the next thing is we'll have 12 in parallel with 24, which yields 36. So I'm gonna copy everything else down, 32 microfarads, 14 microfarads, 36 microfarads, and now I'm going to combine the two on the right to get 36 microfarads. The next thing you'll see the 36 and the 36 are in parallel. 36 and 36 in parallel yields 18. So I'm going to write this I'm gonna copy down the 32 microfarads at the top. I'm actually gonna copy down the 14 microfarads, but I'm going to make it vertical to make it a little easier for redrawing. So this is the same 14 microfarads. Notice it doesn't matter whether it's diagonal or straight up and down. And then the 36 in series with the 36 becomes 18 microfarads. Next, we're going to do a parallel combination. The 14 and the 18 are in parallel. And remember for capacitors, that means to sum. So 18 plus 14 gives us 32 microfarads. And the final step would be 32 in series with 32. And when those combine, it becomes 16 microfarads. So CAB is equal to 16 microfarads. Now let's try our next example to find the equivalent inductance between terminals A and B for the following network. Once again, we'll work from right to left. So starting on the right, I have six in parallel with 14. Six in parallel with 14 is 4.2 Henry. So let's redraw the circuit, replacing those two on the right in parallel with 4.2 Henry. I'll only put the values on the two that we changed in order to make it easier to follow. So here's the 4.2 Henry and the 15.8 Henry. Here's the 60 Henry and the 5 Henry. 4.2 in series with 15.8 becomes 20 Henry. So I'm gonna draw the network again and I'm gonna replace those with a 20. So I have 12 Henry, 5 Henry, 10 Henry, 24 Henry, 80 Henry. And I'm going to make the 60 Henry vertical. So here's the 60 Henry and it's in parallel with 20 Henry. Next, I'm going to put the 60 and 20 in parallel. So I have 12 Henry, 10 Henry, 
24 Henry, 80 Henry, 5 Henry. And 60 and 20 in parallel yield, 15 Henry. So now 5 and 15 in series becomes 20 Henry. And I'll write that over here. So we have 12 Henry, 10 Henry, 24 Henry, and we have 80 Henry in parallel with 20 Henry. Eighty and twenty in parallel yield sixteen Henry. So I have twelve Henry, ten Henry, twenty four Henry, and sixteen Henry. Sixteen and twenty four in series yields forty Henry. So now I have 12 Henry here. I'm going to draw the 10 Henry vertical now. So here's the 10 Henry and here's the 40 Henry. My next step is to put 40 in parallel with 10. 40 in parallel with 10 yields eight Henry. And now to the final answer. Eight plus, 20, eight plus 12 yields 20 Henry. So LAB is equal to 20 Henry. And this includes our lecture on combining inductors and capacitors in series and parallel.